Our final topic for the chapter on vectors in three dimensions is planes. Right? So we're all familiar with the Cartesian plane. That's where most of you know, Calc 1 and Calc 2 takes place. Um, and we've seen that you know, we have, for example, the, the three coordinate planes, uh, you know, the x equals 0, y equals 0, z equals 0 planes in our three-dimensional space. And now we want to sort of look at, well, how does this work more generally? How do we describe a plane in space? What do we mean by a plane? Right? Well, um, one way to think about what a plane should represent is it should, it should be some sort of like copy of the usual Cartesian plane that's somehow embedded into our three-dimensional space. So it's a plane that's sitting there somewhere. So it could be the xy plane or the yz plane, um, but it could be something more general. So just uh, to get us started, as a reminder, if we have a line, right, if we have a line L in three dimensions, how do we describe a line? Well, remember we can, we can do something like this, right? Uh, x, y, z is given by some, let's do, let's just write sort of the shorthand vector form, right? Some point P naught plus T times V. So what P naught, what does that represent? That represents some initial point on the line, right? Like so, it's the position vector for that point on the line. So this is sort of, you know, Where, where to start? You know, we, we want to describe all points on the line, how to get to any point on the line, right? So P0 tells us sort of where to start. We, we agree on a starting point. And we want to end up, let's say, over here at some point P. So this is X, Y, Z, right? Well, we need to know kind of which direction, right? So this is our direction, if you like, of travel. And T, this scalar, what does it do? Well, first of all, let's draw that direction in. So it may be, V might look something like that, right? Um, and what we care about with V is the magnitude, um, not so much the, or sorry, we care about the direction, not the magnitude. Um, some people will ask that uh, v is a unit vector, because if v is a unit vector, then this number t tells you sort of exactly how far you should go, right? If t is equal to 5, you've gone 5 units. Um, otherwise, you've gone 5 times the magnitude of v units. And so some people will ask for a unit vector, but we usually don't make that requirement. Right? And so this, uh, this t, we think of that as sort of telling us, well, how how far we should go in that particular direction once we've got to our starting point, right? And all of that information together tells us how to get to this, this point over here. Right? So we can see the sort of the sum of vectors, right? This one here added to this vector here, t times v, right? Um, is this, yeah, let's see, running out of colors this vector, like that, oh, my green is running low, that's my t times v, right? Rescaled version of v. Okay, now, that's lines. We want to talk planes. So how do we, how do we generalize? How do we get to a plane? Well, one way we can do this is say, well, this is let's say one particular line, and now I want to add another line in. Let's say like so. All right, so now I've got an L2. And I'm going to choose my L2 so that it also passes through this same point, right, this same P0. And so now you can, you can sort of visualize, at least I hope you can, that there's a
there's a plane that contains both of those lines, right? So those two lines, they're sitting inside of a plane. And so now we have not just one direction vector v1, we have another, let's say, v2, right? And so now we might want to get to, you know, some arbitrary point now, not just on one of the lines, but on one of the planes. So we want to get to a point, say, here. All right, so instead of that point on the line, maybe we want to get there. But if you think about it, this, this can be done because through every point on, let's say, L1, I can draw a line that is parallel to L2. Right, I have all these lines parallel to L2. And, oh look, there's one that happens to pass through that point P. So one way to think about what, what we do here is we, you know, we kind of go through the same process. We start at the origin. We first travel to the point P0, okay? Uh, next, we are going to move along L1 in the direction of V1 until we get to this point here, right? Where we meet this line that's parallel to L2. And now we're going to move in the direction of L2 until we get to our point, right? And so this, this vector here, this is some multiple of, let's say, S, some multiple of V1, let's say S times V1, right? Now this one here, maybe that's T times V2. And so what we can do is we can take the scenario that we had for lines, and we can adjust to something that now gives us a plane. So we still have a starting point, but now what happens is we allow not just one direction of travel, we allow two directions of travel, right? So it's V1 and V2 are the directions, let's say, of travel, right? And, and so now be, by combining those two directions, we can move anywhere in the plane, right? We can take some, some as in algebra we call this a linear combination, of V1 and V2, and we can head, you know, directly from the initial point to that point P, right? It's going to be some sum of those two vectors, right? We get this, this vector here. So that is, say, S times V1 and T times V2. All right, so this is one way that you could describe a plane. Turns out to not be the most sort of efficient way of doing it. Um, it works, but, but there's a simpler way to describe a plane. Rather than giving sort of parametric equations with two parameters like this, um, because we're in three dimensions, a plane is sort of a two dimensions. So we just have to eliminate one of those three dimensions to get to a plane. And it turns out that you can get rid of one dimension by writing down one equation. And if it's a linear equation, you will get a plane, right? And so what we want to do is we want to describe a plane by a single linear equation. That's where we'd like to get to. Okay, so how are we going to do that? Well, rather than giving the of the two directions that we can travel, right, the V1 and the V2, uh, what you can do instead is give the one direction that you can't travel, if you want to think about it that way. Um, we can give one vector which is orthogonal to the two that we started with, and we've been through the section on cross products, so we know how to get that. If we want to get a vector which is orthogonal to both V1 and V2, like so, we'll call that n. How do we get n? It's just going to be the cross product, v1 cross v2, right? That'll be orthogonal. And now, 
we won't always, you know, sometimes our plane may be given to us in terms of two intersecting lines, and that's the information we use to construct our plane. Uh, but sometimes we'll just be given that normal vector without necessarily the two vectors, v1 and v2, that it came from. Okay, fine. Uh, in any case, we need this normal vector n. All right. And now we think about this, this vector here, sv1 plus tv2. So what is this vector? It's the vector from p0 to p. So the other thing that we can do is say, well, that vector from p0 to p, right? If we do the usual like head minus tail rule, um, well, it's going to look like this. It's just going to be x minus x0, y minus y0, z minus z0. And we can forget all about the fact that that vector came from these, you know, this linear combination of these two direction vectors, and we can just write that down. And so we forget about the lines, we forget about the v1, we forget about the v2. All we kind of keep in mind is the normal vector and some point on the plane. We have some specified point on the plane, this p0. All right? And we want to get to some other point on the plane. So the, the kind of the point of it all is that whatever point on the plane we choose, um, when we construct this vector from our reference point, that is a vector which lies in the plane, parallel to the plane, so it must be orthogonal to this normal vector, right? The kind of defining property of this normal vector is that it's orthogonal to every vector in the plane, right? So, the equation of the plane becomes, so remember that we can express orthogonality in terms of the dot product by requiring that the dot product be equal to zero. Okay? So that's a vector equation of a plane. Usually we unpack this a little bit. Okay? Um, if we write n as a, b, c, then what we get is a, B, C, dotted with X minus X naught, Y minus Y naught, Z minus Z naught equals zero. And we can expand that dot product. A times X minus X naught plus B times Y minus Y naught plus C times Z minus Z naught equals zero, okay? And, and this is usually sort of the standard equation of a plane that you're going to encounter. Um, it's nice when you get it in this form with zero on that side and everything kind of factored like that because uh, in this form, you kind of have all the information about your plane, right? If you look at the coefficients of x, y, z, the a, b, c, that's gonna tell you the normal vector. These numbers, x naught, y naught, z naught, they tell you a point on the plane, okay? So this is a nice form to have if you've got it. Um, but sometimes you will also see sort of a, if you like, simplified form, which is maybe not as useful, but it is maybe shorter to write down. Um, and you can also write this as simply ax plus by plus cz is equal to d. Where what is d? Well, d is, you know, remember that x0, y0, z0 are numbers, a, b, c are numbers. So if I do all those multiplications, I'm going to get some number. I add it up. That's my d, right? So this d is a, x0 plus b, y0 plus c, c, z0, okay? Um, and so there we see that single linear equation which describes the plane, and this tends to be sort of a, a more efficient way to kind of express the, the data needed to describe a plane than this sort of two-vector parametric approach.